This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 804, What It's Like to Shop After Not Shopping for Two Years, part one, by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. And I'm Dan, your host and narrator, bringing you some of the best blogs on personal finance in audio form. And before we get to our post from Kate Flanders, we are getting close to the end of the month, which means it's time for another book raffle. You are automatically entered if you're part of our free weekly newsletter mailing list. So if you're not on there already, now is a great time to join. Just come by oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com. And I'll give you a quick reminder about that at the end of the show as well. So for now, let's get to our post for today and start optimizing your life. What It's Like to Shop After Not Shopping for Two Years, Part 1, by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. In the first quarter of this year, I did 85 interviews about my book, The Year of Less. By the end of April, that number will have crossed the 100 mark. More than 100 interviews in four months about one book. First, let that sink in for a minute. Take a deep breath and imagine talking to more than 100 people, most of them strangers, about your book and your personal life. How do you think that would feel? Strange, right? Now imagine if you were asked the same handful of questions in the majority of those interviews. It's actually not surprising that it happens. People naturally want to know a few things. Like, what was the hardest part of not shopping for a year? Changing habits. What did your family and friends think? Most people didn't care. Did you regret getting rid of anything? Nope. And I've shared all of that stuff here with you before. But there's one question that keeps coming up that I don't think I've written about. It's asked in a few different ways, but essentially it comes back to this. What is it like to shop now after not shopping for two years? I almost always start by saying that I hate it. I hate shopping. I don't like any part of it, even when it's for something I need. The only thing I like about buying stuff I need is how it feels to actually start using that thing once it's in my possession. But I don't like having to physically make the purchase. And that's not because I hate handing over my money. I don't mind spending money. It's because I simply don't find any joy in shopping. Before going further, let's break this down a little and discuss what my definition of shopping is. And this is actually fun for me to write about finally because I've also found myself saying another thing over and over again in interviews, which is that I wish I had called the shopping ban something else. If I could rebrand it, I would probably call it a browsing ban because that more accurately describes what it was. The goal of the shopping ban wasn't to buy nothing and spend no money for a year. It was to stop mindlessly buying things I didn't actually need and become a more mindful consumer. In order to do that, I had to stop browsing. If you choose to browse, you will almost always find something to buy. Browsing as an activity can be done in person or online. It's easy to describe why I hate in-person browsing so much now. It's physically exhausting. When I enter shopping malls and or most stores, my senses feel overwhelmed. There are too many lights, too many people, too many smells, and too many sales signs promotions. It's simply too much. Case in point, I nearly had a panic attack at the Toronto Eaton Center while trying to find a shirt to wear on TV. And if I have to spend time trying things on or testing things out, I'm usually ready for a nap after. So we're all clear on why I genuinely really dislike browsing in stores now, right? The feelings I have around online browsing are a little trickier to describe only because it can sometimes be more difficult to notice that's what you're doing. Choosing not to browse in stores in person is easy. You literally just don't go inside but we are connected to tools at almost all hours of the day that make it so online browsing is always at our fingertips. That makes it a little more difficult to walk away. I'll take one step backward and share what online browsing looked like for me before the shopping ban, which began in July 2014. It would usually result from hearing about a book, product, or brand that piqued my interest. From there, I would either click through the links placed in articles I was already reading or do a Google search and then find myself scrolling through a website for the next 10 to 20 minutes. This almost always resulted in making a purchase, at least with books. And if I didn't buy something right away, I often bookmarked it and looked at it a few more times before finally entering my payment information and clicking submit order. I want to riff off that last sentence and say this is one of the reasons I don't save bookmarks anymore and it's also why I don't use Pinterest because the more times we look at a product or offer, the more times we think about buying it. And the more we see or hear about something, the more we believe we either really need it or might get value from it. And then we will ultimately make the purchase. Likewise, the less often we see or hear about something, the less likely it is we will ever think about buying it. So no to online bookmarks too. Now I avoid visiting online stores unless I actually need something, and we can talk about what that looks like. 
I also avoid reading articles that I know are filled with lists and links of things I could or should consider buying. Product reviews? No thanks. Makeup tutorials? Never. Haul videos? I wish these didn't exist. I won't even look at lists of which books I should read in a season anymore. But that's mostly because I have enough at home, plus more on hold at the library. And that's not to say any of these things are bad. Every product has a purpose. But if you spend your time learning about the purpose of each object, it's easier to talk yourself into buying anything. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled What It's Like to Shop After Not Shopping for Two Years by Kate Flanders of kateflanders.com. And I'm going to finish up that post for you in tomorrow's episode Before I go today, I want to mention one last time that we are doing another book raffle and it's coming up in just four days. So if you want to be part of that, plus get some free tools from us, please come by oldpodcast.com and simply join the free weekly newsletter. It is a great way to show your support for these shows. And that'll do it for another installment of Optimal Finance Daily. Have a very happy Thursday and thanks so much for being here each and every day and listening and I'll see you in the Friday show tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.